Okay then my friends, so now we're at the point where we want to use Redis within an application and in order to do that we need to make use of a Redis client library. A client library is a library that basically maps those Redis commands that we've been using into functions that we can then call from within our code. So for example, to use the set command, we'd use the set function and pass in the key and value as arguments into that function. If you wanted to set a hash, you'd use a function called hset and so forth. Basically, pretty much any command you can use in Redis gets turned into a usable function we can call from our application, which in turn sends that command to the Redis server. So the client library we're going to be using is one called Node Redis, which is one we can use within a Node environment, like in a Next.js application, which is what we're going to use. But there are libraries for Python, Go and other programming languages as well. I do also want to mention at this point that this is not going to be a deep dive into Next.js or anything like that. I want to keep the focus on Redis. So if you want to learn Next.js, check out my Next13 Masterclass first of all. The link to that is going to be down below. So we need to install this node Redis client library into our next application, which we'll do shortly. And then the first thing we need to do within it is connect our application to the Redis database that we already created. And that looks something a little bit like this right here. So we're going to do this all shortly. But first of all, I want to show you how to get the next JS starter project that I've already prepared for this application. So you can grab the starter project from this GitHub repo right here, which also has the code for each lesson going forwards as well. I'm going to leave the link to this repo down below the video. Now, the first thing you want to do is select the starter project branch from the branch drop down right here. Make sure that's selected. And then you can go to the green code button and from there, download a zip folder of this branch. Once that's finished downloading, we can unzip it and we can start working on the project. But just two more things I want to mention before we do that. First, if you want the code for any future lessons in this series, you can select that lesson from the branch drop down and download a zip folder for that lesson, same way you would do the starter project. Secondly, we're going to need to connect our next application to Redis using the node Redis clients. And to do that, we'll need some credentials and a connection URI, which we can get from our Redis dashboard. So if you head on over to that and select connect from your database right here, then you're going to see this window slide out. And then we want to select Redis client and make sure the node client is selected right here as well. And then just copy this code snippet. We're going to use that shortly in our project. Okay, so I downloaded that starter project from the repo. I'm going to rename this folder to Redis-Books, which is the name of the application we're making. Then I'm going to open this up in VS Code. And the first thing we need to do when this is open is install all of the dependencies listed right here. So to do that, open up your terminal. You can go to the terminal, a new terminal to do that. And then let me just move this up here. I'm going to make sure we're inside the correct directory, Redis Books, and then I'll type npm install. It's going to install all of our project dependencies. Okay then, so we have this very basic Next13 application right here. Now remember, I said this is not going to be a detailed Next.js tutorial, but I will quickly walk you through this data project so you know what's going on. So first up, we have the app directory because we're using Next version 13, which makes use of the app router. Inside there, we've got a home page which just has a nav inside it for a title and also a link to the create page. And that create page is over here inside the create folder. And that just includes a simple form to add a new book. The different inputs are for a book title, an author, a rating, and some blurb about the book as well. Now that form is hooked up to an action which fires in the client, but then invokes a server action, which is inside the actions folder over here in the create.js file. This is where we'll be adding new data to Redis later on. So we'll come back to this. Also, since we're using server actions, which are experimental, we've had to enable them inside the Next.js config file, like so. Finally, I've added some basic styles inside the global CSS file, so everything doesn't look pants in the browser. And if you were to run npm run dev in the terminal, you're going to be able to spin this up in a browser so we can preview it. And it looks something like this. So very simple. We have a title over here. We have this text list of books here. This is where we're going to output the books that we get from Redis later on we've got this link up in the navbar as well to the form page which is where we can add a new book at the minute it's not going to do anything it's not hooked up to anything really so no point in trying to submit anything but that's our starter project so the next thing we need to do is install the redis client into this project so i'm going to cancel out of this process 
I'm going to clear it and then I will say npm install and the package is just Redis. This is Node Redis. It's going to install that client library so that we can use it then to connect to our Redis database. So now we need to connect our application to the Redis database, which we can do using the Node Redis client that we just installed. So what I'll do is make a new folder in the source directory called lib and then inside that make a new file called db.js and this is where we'll connect to the Redis database. So I'm just going to paste in that snippet that we copied from the Redis dashboard before, which is the code we need to connect. So first of all, we import the create client function from Redis, which is the package we just installed. And then we invoke that function and pass in an object with our password for the database, as well as the host and the port. So it uses these details right here to connect to our database. So we store that client inside this constant called clients, which is what we'll then use to access all of those different Redis methods like set, get, hset, etc. So next up, we'll listen for any errors by saying client.on and then specify error. So we're listening for any errors. And then if there is an error, we'll fire a function that's going to take in that error if and when it occurs. And then inside that function, all I'm going to do is log the error to the console. Nothing fancy, just so we can see what's going on. Next, we need to use the connect method on the client to actually go out and connect to the database. But I only want to do this once. I don't want to open multiple connections. So I'm going to do a quick check inside an if statement to see if we already have an open connection by using the is open property on the client. And then if we don't have an open connection, we can then connect using the connect method on the client. And that's going to connect to our database for us. And then if this code ever runs again, we're not going to start a new connection. Okay, cool. So now on this client object, we can use methods like set, for example, to set a new key value pair in the Redis database. For example, we could set the name to be Mario and the key is going to be name. So we'll be using this client object in other files across the application, which means we'll need to export it down here by saying export and then in curly braces clients. And then that's pretty much all we need to do. All right, cool. So one more thing left to do actually, and then we can start sending Redis commands. And that one thing is to store these values right here inside environment variables to secure them, because that way they're not going to be visible within the source code if you push all this up to something like GitHub. So I'm going to create in the root folder down here somewhere, a new file .env dot local to store any environment variables inside. Then I'm going to create three environment variables, one for the password, so redis underscore pw, and then another one for the host, so redis underscore host, and then finally one for the port, so redis underscore port. And then we need to grab those values from over here. So let me cut this one and paste it up here for the password. Then let me grab the next one, which is this. Cut that and paste it right here. And then the final one, which is this, and paste it right here. All right, so that's the environment variables. Now we can just reference those here by saying process dot env dot, and then it's redis underscore pw for the password. And then down here, process dot env dot redis underscore host. And then finally, let me just grab this, paste it here, and it's underscore port. All right, so that's all done now. Now, if we preview this in a browser, nothing much is going to happen, but we will just run npn run dev so it is ready for the next lesson and uh, just to make sure that everything still works. And yeah, everything looks as though it's working awesome. So now we've connected to Redis using that client library. In the next lesson, what we're going to do is use that client library now to send commands to Redis so we can start the process of adding data to Redis and eventually getting data from Redis as well.